Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue the discussion on centrifugal compressor. So, what we started off is that the uh, difference between different turbo machines or why they call the dynamical system and then uh, we start off with the compressor, com centrifugal compressor. So, where we stopped here in the um, last these things we uh, discussing about the stage dynamics and just to get you on board this is where we actually got the equation that can be applied depending on the inlet and outlet station. So, this is where we did now let us consider. So, let us say this is an compressor blade. So, consider this as a compressor blade which is in motion and this is the blade the direction of the blade motion and this section is the inlet which is the um, and the going out at station 2. So, these are all your at the trailing edge and the leading edge and these are your typical velocity triangle. So, if we assume the flow moves smoothly along the blade which is essentially relative to the moving blade. So, and the flow is parallel to the leading edge and trailing edge. So, this is a very important statement to understand because when you say that the flow goes smoothly along the blade, but this is again relative to the moving blade. Here is a situation which is slightly different compared to our stationary component. Here the blade is in motion. So, this is a very important. So, there is a rotation which is associated with that and so what makes the things uh, difference is that what kind of reference frame that we use the for analyzing this kind of system because one can use the relative frame of reference one can convert things to a different frame of reference and look at the thing. So, this statement is quite important. Now, what you can have the flow relative to the blade is also important. So, this is also quite important and what we have from the velocity triangle you can have v bar u plus w. Now, if you expand this this is V r, V theta. So, these are the different component of velocity triangle or the velocity vector. So, these are the component. Then u is in the theta direction only because this is the blade motion. Similarly, w will have 3 component like W r, W theta and W z. Okay. So, which straight away give you V r equals to W r and also V theta equals to u plus W theta and similarly V z equals to W z. 
So, these are the things what one can get out of this um, velocity vector of the velocity vector triangle and what about v square? This is nothing but v r square v theta square v z square w square would be w r square. So, all the so there is now we are going back to the sort of an vector or the calculus here. What is important here to note is that the tangential velocity component, the tangential velocity component that changes due to changes due to blade motion. So, this is a very very important statement to note here. So, now we have an situation where we get this relationship between the velocity vector and all this. Now, moving ahead we look at the energy equation. So, we using the energy equation what we get? So, we write down that q plus uh, let us say w plus equals to h not 2 minus h not 1. So, there is no heat transfer takes place. So, that goes off then what we get u 2 v theta 2 minus u 1 v theta 1 equals to h 2 minus h 1 plus v 2 square minus v 1 square by 2. So, one can note here this is what we are writing for inertial frame of reference or reference frame whatever you call it. So, that is quite important to note what we are writing and this um, work this is exactly what we have obtained per unit mass that is what we are writing there. Now, if you expand this terms, so this one one can write u 2 you take it out then it would be u 2 plus w theta 2 minus u 1 u 1 plus w theta 1 which is h 2 minus h 1 plus b 2 square by 2 square by 2. So, what one can get h 2 minus h 1 equals to u 2 square minus u 1 square plus u 2 w theta 2 minus u 1 w theta 1 minus half v r 2 square plus u 2 square to u 2 w theta 2 plus w theta 2 square plus half v r 1 square plus u 1 square to u 1 w theta 1 plus w theta 1 square plus v z 1 square. So, it just expanding this term. Now, if you do little bit of algebra finally, what you can do you can do it yourself this uh, few more lines and finally, after rearrangement what you can get h 2 minus h 1 is u 2 square by 2 minus u 1 square by 2 w 2 square by 2 w 1 square by 2. So, this is what you get and this is let us say equation number 3. Okay. So, that is what you get when you 
apply the energy equation. So, now one can do that. So, this is what you get uh, for example, this is your energy equation for a reference frame fixed to the rotor, fixed to the rotor. Okay. So, this is what you get for that thing. So, that means you are applying to a streamline observed in that coordinate system. Now, what I can write that let us say for an incremental change along a streamline, we can write dh equals to d r omega square by 2 minus d w square by 2 or this w is uh, basically work. So, you can put w c just to avoid any confusion because w c that will be the work of the compressor. Now, if you use equation of state for perfect gas. So, equation of state for perfect gas what I can write d h equals to p d s plus d p by rho. So, which in turn you can write d p by rho equals to d of r omega square minus d of w c square minus t d s. Now, if you assume or for isentropic flow, so this is going to be d s is 0. So, this system of equation becomes d p by rho equals to d r omega square by 2 minus. So, that is equation from. So, which tells you there is an pressure rise even with no change in relative velocity. So, this happens because of change in corresponding pressure development in the centrifugal compressor in centrifugal compressor. So, this is what you can always conclude that there is a pressure rise even there is no change in relative velocity. Now, at the same time one can have for axial compressor this d r is essentially 0 along streamline and this equation 4 that becomes d p by rho equals to minus d 
W C square by 2. So, when you look at this one can clearly see for axial compressor rotor one can obtain a pressure rise. So, you can see that for axial compressor rotor one can obtain pressure rise only by decelerating the flow the flow which means the rotor as well as the stator or and stator flow passages act like an diffuser flow passages act like diffusers. So, this is quite natural once you look at these particular equations and what happened I mean this also brings the difference between the axial flow compressor and the centrifugal compressor. Now, on the other hand in um, centrifugal compressor first stage of equation 4 is greater than 0. So, which in turn means that the pressure rise could, could develop in the rotor even there were no change in the relative velocity w. So, this is what it means that means with rising p no boundary layer separation takes place. Since it would not affect the relative velocity of boundary layer and free stream fluid. So, the design while doing the design one can do the design. Uh, so, one can design the system by reducing w and also it is important to note there here is that centrifugal compressor is limited by separation compared to axial one. So, centrifugal compressor is limited by separation compared to axial 1, which means one can get higher PRC is. So, that straight away explain why a single stage centrifugal compressor can provide or can get you higher pressure rise compared to axial 1. Now, let us uh, move to the uh, rotor and see. So, let me draw the picture first. So, we have this then So, that is how it goes. So, you have this one here, this one here. So, let us say this is u 2 
this is u 1 and this is how rotation is there. So, I can have an system like this where the shaft is sitting there and this would be this is the schematic of the section. So, that 2 this is 1. So, this width you can think about B, then this radius is R2, then this would be R1. So, so this is the rotor. So, we are considering the, the work done in rotor. Okay. So, what you there is an assumption that the r v theta is same for all incoming streamlines. So, which says that the flow enters the compressor smoothly. So, this is what we get. So, that means, the flow enters the compressor smoothly. Now, we write the energy equation for adiabatic flow. H naught 2 minus H naught 1. So, this is 0 which will be C p T naught 2 minus T naught 1. So, what we have is that u 2 v theta 2 minus u 1 v theta 1 equals to C p T naught 2 minus T naught 1. What we get T naught 2 minus T naught 1 divided by T naught 1. 1 by C p u 2 v theta 2 minus u 1 v theta 1. Now, you can expand this term which one can write gamma minus 1 by r gamma t naught 1 u 2 square into v theta 2 by u 2 minus v theta 1 u 1 by u 2 square which is gamma minus 1 u 2 square by a naught 1 square v theta 2 by u 2 minus u 1 v theta 1 u 2 square. Now, typically the inlet flow is purely axial. So, that means, V theta 1 would be 0. So, when the inlet flow is axial this, so that get me to this equation T naught 1 by T naught 1 equals to gamma minus 1. So, T naught 2 minus gamma minus 1 u 2 square by A naught 1 square V theta 2 by u 2. So, that is our equation 5. So, the whole thing when we assume the inlet flow is axial 
this is what we get for the rotor. Now, it depends what kind of blade arrangement you have. So, there could be possibly three different kind of blade arrangement. One possible is that you can have like this kind of blade arrangement like this. So, this goes like this. So, this is the angle called beta and you can have then this called forward leaning where beta is negative. So, the other case one can have is that straight radial kind of blades. So, this is the rotation. So, this is straight radial or third option could be the backward leading that means, the blade could be arranged in this direction still the rotation in this direction. So, this could be the angle beta here this is called backward leaning that means, beta is positive. So, here if you look at this for the forward leaning the blade curvature is in the or the rather the blade curved in the direction of rotation. So, this is where the blades along radians w 2 in radial direction and the backward leading when beta is positive blades curve in the direction opposite to the rotation. So, if you look at the velocity triangle for this forward leaning you can have this is the rotational direction. So, what you can have is this, this and so this would be u2 v2 and w2 so then this case it would be straight radial so this is what it is so your v2 w2 u2 so, this case beta 0 and so this is the angle beta. So, here the beta is negative and this case you will have w 2 and then So, this is u 2 v 2 w 2 and this is my beta and this would be my w r component and this case beta is positive. So, when you have different kind of setup of the blade or the different configuration or arrangement of the blades. So, you will have different velocity triangle and uh, forward leaning or the straight or the backward leaning they will have different kind of 
uh, velocity triangle to represent the flow field when it passes through the rotor. Now, depending on this kind of um, different blade configuration, not only the flow physics will change, also the dynamics of the system is going to change and what kind of work you get out of this system. So, let us consider, consider an a velocity triangle or uh, of backward leaning case, backward leaning case okay. and we will look at the detail analysis what happens when you take that kind of blade. So, we will stop here and continue the discussion in the next lecture.